Arise. Now joining us to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from all around the world are Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni and Dayo Shobowale. Mr. Emmanuel Efeni. Good afternoon, Mbai. Good, Good afternoon, Cynthia. Good afternoon, Dayo. Good afternoon. Yes, we'll start the review with the story above the mast head. Health care delivery is people's right and not privilege, says First Lady Remitinubu wants removal of all barriers to actualize health for all. World Health Organization, 4.5 billion people lack full essential health. For the First Lady, um, Senator Olure Mitinubu, yes, restating what is obvious, but we don't have that on ground. Because Nice, she has emphasized it. She has emphasized it. She has taken it. interest. She's in a position to move things. Correct. So I think uh, because uh, yes. she's in power, or well, the husband is in power, right? Yes. But she's been very vocal in this administration. Of course. Was, was it yes, I thought that was now. All right. So that's it's where I was even going as a two time senator. Hmm? Um, she knows how these things work. And um, Perhaps uh, we need to see the full scale of the program of the health ministry because they have a full team. There's even a coordinating minister for the ministry, the health uh, sector. So and what uh, is really important yes. is the emphasis that she has yes. on this. It is a right, not a privilege, for people to have access to health facilities that will make life easier for them. Yes. Health so, insurance, what have you so we want to see the actualization of that right hmm? now that um, uh, the husband is I'm the, sure she's the president. Be working in that direction. Yeah. So hopefully. Yeah, because the the health ministry has um, the two ministers and there's a coordinating minister there, and so we want to see action. Action. Yes. Restating right. restating the obvious. It's okay. To remind one and yeah, all. But that's policy. You mm. have to state <coughs> policy first. Yes. Ah, so this is, so, so, you know, well, let people know this is the direction we are moving. And you move. Mm. You yeah. walk the talk. Yeah, okay. Right. The other story there you just discussed, article raises concern over Lagos Calabar Highway Project. Suggests so it should have started from Calabar, if genuine. Vimba will have said amen I to that. I agree, completely. <coughs> <laughs> well, this is a project uh, that uh, will cover nine states. If um, fully completed, it will open up a whole corridor of development. Businesses, uh, real estate, jobs along that corridor. This well, is take, going to take a lot of money and some time. Yes. The, Almost a decade. If you yes. look at the light rail mm -hmm. with the Chinese. Is the, you know, this project was actually uh, started by good luck a Billy Jonathan, president. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, before he, he take off there. Take off, of course, he was voted out of power. And, and President Mamadou Buhari tried it. Um, tried it, came up also, made pronouncements, said it had been reviewed down by $800 million to $11.1 billion, and even gave a, a, a duration for completion, three years duration. But again, like no finger was lifted there. As bureaucracy. Yes, now President Bola Metinimbu is actualizing that um, project. And then we should make uh, the journey from Lagos to Calabar, Vimbai. Very short, right? It's a couple of hours. Ah, but of <laughs> course, Atiku Abubakar has raised a number of issues, and uh, I think he's doing his job <coughs> as an opposition leader. And um, the issues he has raised, talking about transparency um, and all that, cost of project should be known, and uh, how the, this project will be funded. I don't think he's asking for too much. And but as to whether it should start from Calabar or Lagos, well, leaders, uh, you know, uh, if President Bola met me, he's from Lagos, so he's starting it from Lagos. Well, I, I wouldn't put too uh, much emphasis on that um, because 
uh, I can as well suggest that you, should be, you start it from Delta and move both sides, right? But... But was, was it the argument yeah, that the there's so much investment on the Lagos side already? There's private investment. Yeah. So why not start from the side that has lesser business activity and work your way up? Or oh, the area that needs it most. Oh, that needs it I'm most, I'm exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God I'm not president, <laughs> Mr. Shobo Ale. <laughs> well, but the issues he has raised, I think these are issues that should bring clarity to. I've just for, raised this Yes, I know, I know. For issues of, for purpose of transparency, it's not a matter of you to start throwing tantrums at Atiku for raising the, uh, these concerns. Um, then the lead story, KPMG, monetary tightening policy will attract more for FX inflows, but not enough to tame inflation. FDC, Nigeria surging prices to peak, begin moderate Decline from second half of 2024 suggests VAT should be raised to 10% to fund minimum wage hike. Says Naira undervalued by 26.6%. The issue of Naira undervalued or overvalued. Well, the, the CBN talked of harmonization of both rates almost achieved. And uh, stability in the market almost achieved, but there are many who still believe that at uh, 1,225, well, the Naira can certainly do better with a kind of resources. But the fact that policies put in place by the central bank, well, seem to be bringing in some inflows, especially from. Um, from a foreign portfolio Mr. investor. I like the fact that this report from KPMG also highlighted what we've been calling out, which is hot money. Yeah. How sustainable is this? Because we all know mm -hmm. that these are initiatives that are being taken to defend the Naira. But without real economic reform happening under that, how long will this hot money be thrown at this problem is, is the question. So I like that K KPMG oh. also highlighted that. Highlighted that. that. Now, the other story about bank, the Guardian newspaper, Road to 500 billion Naira recapitalization. Bank owners lobby, seek adjustment in share capital composition. Uh, according to the infographics, you can see in the front page of uh, the Guardian is about Nigeria may witness fewer banks by March 31, 2026. Yes. Now, of yes. course, yes. because, yes, some banks, there will be mergers. There will be mergers uh, to yeah. meet, and some will just uh, step down. Uh, from where so water was swallowed by the big government. Yes, so, so of course we saw it during the Soludo recapitalization. Mm. Banks, the number of banks dropped so drastically. Now the Punch newspaper, federal government plans three national ID cards for 104 million Nigerians in June. NIMC awaits presidential approval for May launch, says procurement will be seamless. Nigerians to get different e-cards for banking. That your three mm -hmm. ID cards, mm -hmm. it's not wasteful. One should be Overkill. enough. Now, if we just look at one foreign it's newspaper just quickly, data. the Wall Street Journal, if you put it up there, six months after Hamas attack, Israel's mm -hmm. world is upside down. And they, they seem to be... Seventh. <laughs> and they seem to be looking for more wars with that attack on... Uh, uh, Iranian consulate that killed uh, Iranian general and some other. But Netanyahu uh, has withdrawn his troops. Also, he said the war, the war has not ended. Well, it's, it's unfortunate, but we've also run out of time. We'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for your analysis. Mr. Emmanuel Feni, Mr. Daesh Bwale, thank you so much for joining us on this day. <laughs>